Hi there, and welcome to another Mark Lowry's Tales from the Shed. Today, I'm going to be chatting about the jam donut that ruined my life, which is the first of the Roman Garstang adventures. Uh, somewhere else on the YouTube, there's a video of me looking a bit younger than I look now, reading the first chapter of it. Uh, but as a special request from Bushbury Hill Primary School, um, in, I think, Wolverhampton, I've been asked if I could read them their class story today from In the Middle on Tuesday. Uh, but what's happened so far is that Roman, in trying to eat a jam donut during a school trip to an aquarium, gets hit in the face with a jellyfish. His best friend throws, tries to throw a wee on him, but it goes in the face of his brand new girlfriend, Jane, who then comes around to his house later that day when his face is all swollen and... And uh, she comes round and eats his donut, uh, which is even more depressing for him. Uh, but it turns out that she eats like a pig, despite being a lovely, well-behaved, sweet girl. So here we go. This is Tuesday morning. I spoil someone's weight loss diet and am accused of murder. That night, I dreamt I was trapped inside a giant donut. I was trying to eat my way out, but then get Jane and Gamble started gobbling it. And when I screamed at them to stop, my lungs filled with jam and I couldn't stop because my hands and feet were stuck. And then I jolted awake, sweating. My bed covers tangled around my arms and legs. I touched my face. It was warm and sensitive, but it no longer hurt. I was absolutely starving. Speaking of which... It was half past six in the morning. No one else in the house would be up. But it would be rude not to satisfy my rumbling tummy with a teeny weeny pre-breakfast donut, wouldn't it? I crept down to the kitchen and pulled a stool over to the top cupboard where Mum keeps the emergency donut. The box is always hidden behind the tea bags because Mum thinks I won't look there. I reached past them, expecting my fingers to bump against it any moment, but... Hang on. It wasn't there. Looking for this? By any chance said Mum from the doorway. I turned slowly round. Mum was wearing a nighty and dressing gown. She was holding a pink shiny gift bag with tinsel and bows dangling off it. What's that? I asked, climbing down off the stool. It's a donut, said Mum. The emergency donut, you mean? I said, why is it wrapped up like a Christmas present and how come you're up so early? Mum clapped her hands excitedly. <laughs> oh, I woke up suddenly an hour ago and the idea was right there in my brain. Wouldn't it be cute if Roman gave a present to his girlfriend? Oh, I said. I was horrified. Jane would probably swallow it whole. At that moment, Dad came bundling downstairs into the kitchen, his suit half on and the toothpaste all round his mouth. Ah, you're awake. Brilliant news about the girlfriend, he cried, slapping me on the shoulder. Now, quick tip, never do what she says. Or is it always do what she says? Dad isn't good at advice. Mum shook her head. Oh, fashion your trousers, Frank, she handed me the gift bag. Right, Roman, make sure you can give it to Jane outside school so I can get a photo. Definitely not, I said. Nonsense, said Dad. First girlfriend misses a big moment. Gutted, I'm going to miss it. Hey, Barbara, maybe you could get a video of her eating it as well. Oh, good idea, said Mum. I shuddered. <laughs> You really don't want that, I said. Maybe I should just save all this fuss and eat it myself. Oh, it's no fuss, said Mum. It's sweet that you've got a girlfriend. I think she only came round yesterday for a donut, I said. Nonsense, said Mum. She wanted to see you. Only because she felt bad for ignoring me after she got covered in we, I said. We, said Mum. Dad whistled. Wow. Things have changed since I was a lad. You meant to shower her with gifts, Roman, said Mum. Not with... Her voice tailed off. It wasn't my fault, I said. Someone was throwing we at me and I kind of ducked. Very wise, said Dad. A gentleman always puts himself first. Mum rolled her eyes. No, Frank. A gentleman puts his lady first. It's obvious. You owe Jane one, Roman. You have to give her this. And so, a couple of hours later, I wound up shuffling through the school gates with my hair greased down, wearing a tie and carrying the most embarrassing gift bag of all time. I turned around and Mum grinned at me from the other side of the fence. Camera at the ready. 
at least I persuaded her not to follow me onto the playground. An incredibly hairy white pencil case. I didn't actually get the chance to give Jane her present straight away. She was standing with her friends and they were all huddled together and started giggling when I came through the gate. Mum gestured at me to go over to Jane. I stood behind a tree, pretending not to know who she was. Thankfully, the bell soon rang and we all trooped inside. As I was hanging up my coat in the corridor, I tried to slip the gift bag with the donut into my rucksack. I was hoping Jane wouldn't have noticed it. I should be so lucky. You look smart, Roman, she said, practically yanking the gift bag out of my hands. A present? All for me? Is this what I think it is? Oh, thank you. I thought we could share it. I offered. Worth a try. Jane screwed up her face. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's bad luck to share a present with the person who's just given it to you. Oh, I said, I've never heard that. Trust me, it is she said quickly. You can sit with me at playtime while I eat it, though. It'll be so romantic. Yeah, I thought, romantic. Like watching feeding time at the zoo. At that moment, Rosie Taylor suddenly appeared. Everybody, status update. Romans bought Jane a present. Everyone else said, ooh. I felt myself blushing bright red. Present, said Gamble, elbowing his way through. What present? Oh, great. Jane licked her lips. Well, if I know my Romy Bowen, it'll be a big blob of raspberry jam, all wrapped up in yummy, scrummy, squishy splodge dough. Where's mine? Said Gamble. His baked bean head was twitching angrily. Uh, you're not his girlfriend, said Jane. Shut your gob toilet face, replied Gamble, grabbing it off, me, off her. He promised me one yesterday. Do something, Roman, cried Jane. You're meant to be my boyfriend. Mm, I probably should do something, I thought. Then again, this was David Darren Gamble we were talking about here. On his first day in school, he told us all he'd once been arrested for headbutting a police car. I decided not to intervene. Jane huffed out her cheek. She reached forward for the gift bag, but Gamble ducked out of her way, pulled out the unwrapped donut, rubbed it under his armpit, and then offered it back to her. Still want it? Before she could answer, Mrs. MacDonald stomped into, close, into the cloakroom. What is the meaning of this? She snarled. Gamble innocently hung the gift bag on his peg. Nothing, miss. Rosie Taylor stepped forward. It was all Roman's fault. Typical. As if I wasn't having a bad enough morning already, Mrs. MacDonald tutted. I'm not interested in your silly squabbles said Jane. Mrs. MacDonald raised a chubby little hand. I've enough problems of my own, thank you. All of you in class now. Jane looked like she was going to about to cry. On his way past, Gamble shoved his face right in front of mine. I don't want to be horrible, but his breath smelt like, um... Imagine if an old lump of cheese learned how to fart, and you might be halfway there. I thought he was going to punch me or threaten me, but instead he did something worse. Darren Gamble shook my hand. And say, so you not. Mate, he said. Mate. Wonderful. Thanks to the deadly donut, I was now mates with the craziest kid in our school. Inside the classroom, Mrs. MacDonald took the register in a flat, irritable voice. Jane was sobbing at the, in her chair, but Gamble wasn't bothered at all. He was bouncing up and down, waving his hand about. Next to him, Mrs. Clegg was filing her nails. What is it, Durham? said Mrs. MacDonald, not looking up from the computer. Miss, you said you were having a bad morning. Why, miss? Were you drunk last night, miss? A few people tittered. Mrs. MacDonald pursed her lips. If you must know, this is the reason why. She reached behind her desk and pulled out an enormous cage. It was so big, it practically filled the front table. There was a big wow as everybody surged around it. Is it a rat? said Gamble, pressing his face right against the bars. Do you want me to shoot it? I can get me air rifle. Roman will hold it still for me. Certainly not, said Mrs. MacDonald. She opened a little door on the cage and pulled out what looked like an incredibly hairy white pencil case. This is my prize winning guinea pig, Mr. Wiggles. Oh, yuck, said Rosie Taylor. Rodents are disgusting. Mrs. MacDonald brushed its long, fluffy fur with a tiny silver comb. Actually, Mr. Wiggles is a valuable pedigree piggy-wiggy. There is nothing disgusting about him. He's probably cleaner than some of the people in this class. 
I wasn't the only person who glanced at Gamble when she said this. The hairy white pencil case tried to crawl up the sleeve of Mrs. MacDonald's cardigan. She pulled it out. Ooh, it tickles. He's always trying to play hide and seek. Why is he in school, miss? Is something wrong with him? Has he got worms like my dog? Said Gamble. Mrs. MacDonald took a deep breath. The guinea pig tried to burrow her under her sleeve again. Certainly not. I've had to bring him to school because, well, he gets lonely on his own. And I've sacked his babysitter. A babysitter for a guinea pig. Good grief. Why did you sack her, miss? Said, asked Gamble. Was she playing football with him as the ball? No, of course. Did she nail him to a wall and throw darts at him? Uh, definitely. Did she tie him to a firework and shoot him into space? Actually, said Mrs. MacDonald, covering the guinea pig's ears, I gave the babysitter a special diet sheet for Mr. Wiggles to stick to. Smoked salmon, grapes, cherry tomatoes, organic orange juice, you know, the normal foods for a guinea pig. Normal? Mr. Wiggles eats better than me. Anyway, continued Mrs. MacDonald, she must have been feeding him unhealthy snacks instead. Look, this is what he used to look like. She pointed at the framed picture of Mr. Wiggles on her desk. And look at him now. He's obese. She held him up in the air to prove her point. A couple of people in the class gasped at the difference. In real life, he looked fairly similar to the picture, i.e. like a Cornish pasty wrapped in a wizard's beard. However, I have to say that since the picture had been taken, he did look like he'd been given a few blasts with the bicycle pump. I remembered her phone call at the aquarium. Mrs. MacDonald had been talking about someone putting on weight. I assumed she was talking about a person, a human, but she must have been talking about Mr. Wiggles. Mrs. MacDonald rubbed her nose against the guinea pig's nose. Her nose against the guinea pig's nose. It's the British guinea pig championships at the weekend. How can he defend his gold medal when he's so overweight? The head teacher says I can keep him here to control his diet. It was that or I had the week off. Rosie Taylor put her hand up, but didn't wait to be asked before speaking. Miss, do you know the American singer, Indigo Termite? No, said Mrs. MacDonald wearily. Well, said Rosie, on secretcelebritygossip.com, she sa it said she lost eight stone in two weeks by eating only powdered eggshells and garlic. You should try that with your hands up. Guinea pig huffed Mrs. MacDonald. And no, I will not. These, those diets have terrible side effects. The BGPA, that's the British Guinea Pig Association, would never allow a guinea pig with bad breath to win the title. Can I stroke him, miss? Gamble asked. Under no, absolutely no circumstances, said Mrs. MacDonald, placing the guinea pig carefully back into its cage and clipping the door shut. And that goes for everyone. Mr. Wiggles has only just come back from his hairstylist. His hairstylist, yowzers. Now, said Mrs. MacDonald, carefully placing his cage next to the sink. In today's English lesson, we were going to write about our aquarium trip, but I changed my mind. Instead, we're going to write a letter of complaint to an irresponsible guinea pig sitter. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That was part of Tuesday in the book and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I hope you want to read on and find out more about Roman okay take it easy bye bye